Do I have a problem with Islam? Yes, I do have a problem with Islam. I think it's a fascist ideology. I believe Islam is a, is a, is a violent and dangerous religion and even a retarded culture. Islam but is a violent, I would say religion, but it's not a religion. It's a political system. It's a violent political system bent on the overthrow of the governments of the world and, the, and, and world domination. That is the ultimate aim. And uh, they talk about infidels and all this, but the truth is, that's what the game is. So you're dealing with a, not a religion, you're dealing with a political system. And I think we should treat it as such and treat its adherents as such as we would members of the Communist Party or members of some fascist group. Humanity First was established in 1992 as an international volunteer-based relief organization. Whether there is a natural disaster or a community development program, the volunteers of Humanity First are serving humanity across the globe. In December 2004, the terrible disaster of tsunami caused a loss of over 220,000 lives and 1.5 million homeless. Humanity First responded with over 150 volunteers. Medical camps and relief shelters served the victims for over four months. Over $3.5 million of aid was distributed. Presently, Humanity First is engaged in the rebuilding phase, which includes water wells, schools, orphan centers, and fishing boats. October 2005, a terrible earthquake in South Asia caused the loss of over 80,000 lives and 2 million homeless. Humanity First responded within 24 hours. More than 200 volunteers served the affected areas for over nine months. Over 60,000 were provided with the aid of several million dollars. This included food, medicines, relief camps, and temporary and semi-permanent housing shelters. Within the United States, in 2004, Humanity First responded to the victims of Hurricane Charlie in Florida. And in August 2005, Humanity First responded to the devastation caused by Hurricane Katrina. Humanity First operated a medical and human support camp in conjunction with the Red Cross for over 45 days. Initial aid of $120,000 was provided. Subsequently, in the rebuilding phase, three schools were provided infrastructure assistance, and at present, 
Humanity First is managing a grant of over $1 million in that area. Currently in the United States, Humanity First has access to over 2,000 motivated volunteers from all walks of life who are proud to serve humanity locally and internationally. Here are some testimonials about their services. Humanity First has been a, a huge help. They've come in and, and, and brought us any supplies we needed and made sure that, that we're taken care of in any way that we could be. And it's been tremendous. We need organizations like Humanity First. I have found them to be very cordial and efficient. I'm working with Red Cross right now with the Banner First Doctors. They're wonderful. Humanity First has been absolutely awesome. It's been a wonderful experience to work with such caring uh, physicians. It, it is a rarity in, in my practice that, that you find physicians that are willing to go above and beyond. The 10-year anniversary of 9-11 just around the corner. To remember the lives lost on that day, the oldest American Muslim organization in the country is launching a nationwide blood drive this month. 13 ABC's Ashley Roth is live to tell us what this campaign is all about. Ashley? The Amidia Muslim community has kicked off its Muslim for Life campaign by hosting blood drives. Their hope is that the blood drives will not only save lives, but get rid of a stigma. The president of Amidia's Michigan chapter says terrorists caused misconceptions about what Muslims really believe in. That's not what the, the faith or the religion teaches. It actually upholds the sanctity of life. Uh, we're not supposed to take any life. Because it's the 10-year reunion of 9-11, the Muslims for Life is trying to collect 10,000 bags of blood. That could save up to 30,000 lives. It's a huge task, but you know, it's going well. So far, 202 blood drives have been scheduled throughout September, and that number goes up daily. We caught up with one donor who's been giving blood for years. I feel it's an obligation. You know, one pint of blood, you can save three people, four people, and um, I've been giving for a long time. Today was my sixth gallon. Wexler donates as often as he can. And although he didn't know this campaign was taking place, he says it doesn't matter what your religion is, you can still help save lives. Because I'm a, an active participant with the um, interfaith blood drive where we get all religions coming in, especially with me, you know, I'm Jewish. It was 40 years ago that I first visited the London Mosque. And over those many, many years, my friendship with this wonderful community has always come, not from my head, but from my heart. Because we all know what has been achieved over the years not only in this country, but worldwide, of the enormous respect that exists in countries throughout the world to this wonderful, wonderful community, and rightly so, because you are the people in everyday life that show what respect, what tolerance, and what understanding really does mean. And all of you and your families should be very, very proud of what you stand for and what you believe in. The other great strength of this community is the spiritual leader, His Holiness, and the wonderful inspirations that he always gives in the addresses that he gives, not only at gatherings such as this. I was lucky enough last October to attend the speech that he gave in the House of Commons. A wonderful speech. Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the Almighty, the Merciful. Thank you, Your Holiness, dear colleagues, for this wonderful gathering of so many nations here in this peaceful place. 
you bring with you a celebration of peace and joy. You stand for opposition, peaceful opposition, to persecution of others for their religious beliefs, persecution for their different backgrounds, persecution for their different cultures. You are the messengers of peace. And today, as you come from so many nations internationally to spend this wonderful week here in prayer, in friendship, and in joy, you give a message to all of us who may not share the absolute way in which you worship, but we share your commitment to peace to hope, to joy, and to the love of our fellow men and women. Indeed, you exemplify the great virtues of Islam. You fulfill the words and actions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And as a woman, I say, your wives, your daughters, your sisters, your mothers, your grandmothers, and your granddaughters, they too exemplify the virtues, the strength, the courage, the peace and wisdom of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him's wife and his daughter, Fatima. You are Islam in being. And because you represent the cardinal virtues of Islam, we too share with you those virtues, and we believe that we try also to fulfill those virtues. Therefore, we are together here today as one. We share a common value system, whether we are Ahmadiyya, worshippers, Christians, other strands of Islam, of all faiths or none. We are the community of values that is the bedrock of a peaceful and a hopeful future. Your Holiness, fellow guests, Ahmadiyya, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm very glad to be back here in your convention, convention again. Um, I have had uh, a good relationship, as the presentation said, with uh, colleagues from your association during a long time. Uh, the late Hasrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad, I'm honored to say, had a personal relationship with me and I mourn his loss. During his visit to Sweden, I have had the privilege to share his vision of the future. With his great insight, he was able to discuss many years ahead what is happening in the world today. Accordingly, the Ahmadiyya Yamat is achieving tremendous results in the field of human rights and services in the form of opening hospitals, schools, and other civic facilities all over Africa. You already know that Sweden was a country that awarded the Nobel Prize to physics to a first Muslim, and it was not a coincidence that he was an Ahmadiyya Muslim. I would like... It's a great honor for me to introduce to you <clears throat> the Right Honorable Stephen Harper, the Prime Minister of Canada. Thank you very much. Thank you for that warm reception. Thank you, Nassim, for your introduction. Bon matin. Good morning. 
First of all, my warmest greetings to His Holiness, the Khalifa. Uh, welcome back to Canada. I have fond memories of our first meeting in Toronto in 2005. It's wonderful that you're here during the worldwide celebrations of the centenary of the Caliphate um, uh, Ahmadiyya. Greetings as well to my colleagues from the Parliament of Canada, Art Hanger, the Member of Parliament for this riding. I know uh, Raheem Jaffer is here, Deepak Obrai, uh, Senator Bert Brown, I see Alexa McDonough, Stefan Dion is also here, Leader of the Opposition. Greetings to members of the uh, provincial legislature, of various provincial legislatures. I know Minister Stevens is here uh, representing the Government of Canada. Greetings to Mayor uh, Brancagne, to uh, Alderman Kali Urquhart, and to other members of Municipal Council, and of course to all distinguished guests. Uh, fellow Canadians, I want to begin by thanking His Holiness for inviting me to be part of the opening of this magnificent House of Faith. I don't suppose I will be the first to observe that it isn't exactly the little mosque on the prairie. <laughs> Quite the opposite. It is Canada's largest mosque complex and a spectacular addition to Calgary's growing collection of architectural treasures. Ahmadis are renowned throughout the world for their devotion to peace, universal brotherhood, and the will of God, the core principles of true Islam. Ahmadis are also renowned for working to serve the greater good through social, health, and educational initiatives as well as mosque projects like this one. And wherever Ahmadis live in the world, you are renowned for enthusiastically participating in the larger community and peacefully living, living alongside people of all faiths, languages, and cultures. These characteristics place Ahmadiyya Muslims squarely in the mainstream of Canadian society. All Calgarians, Albertans, and Canadians can see in this mosque the true and benevolent face of Islam and those who worship in its name. They will also see your love for Canada and your patriotism. Ahmadis have embraced Canada, and Canada has embraced you. The glorious This glorious Betunur Mosque announces that you have built a thriving community in this dynamic city and that you have taken your rightful place in our great country. Félicitations, congratulations, God bless, Kadu Hafiz. We hold a passionate desire to establish peace and to end cruelty in light of the true Islamic teachings. The Ahmadiyya community claims and indeed those who are closely associated with us are witness to this, that not only do we raise a slogan for peace, but in fact, we make practical efforts to establish tolerance, peace, and patience. In short, the disorder taking place these days in the world, whether on a national or international scale, is based upon just one factor, and that is a complete lack of justice, which is causing anxiety and restlessness to develop. The question arises that how can the present situation in the world be resolved? I have given the answer to this earlier when quoting the writing of the founder of the Amdiya community, in which he advised us to establish a relationship with God and exhibit the truth.